Hello, welcome to Maps and QCs. Today we're going to be taking a look at user interface for Play Canvas. If you're unsure about what user interfaces are, uh, it covers various things such as uh, text that can come up on the screen, other types of menus of which the user is able to interact with, uh, and even like small debugging options such as draw calls, which can be very helpful when testing this on device. So to get started creating your user interface, you will want to go and create a new entity under the user interface menu and create 2D screen. You can create a 3D screen if you'd like this to be a 3D object in your scene. For example, over here we can see that these thumbs in the world are all 3D objects but are acting as a 2D scene. All the follow-up instructions will actually work for both. The only difference between them is a small checkbox which is screen space. That's the only thing that changes. So talk a little bit about what 2D screens are. Over here we can see on our uh, 2D screen we are able to give it a reference uh, resolution. This one here is your example size for you to actually work in and create your user interface. We'll get into a little bit how that works later on but you can also modify the rest of these to work as you need. To start populating your user interface, you can create new entities, still using the user interface, and create either a text element, an image element, use various layout groups to order everything, add in some buttons, or even add in a scroll view. When adding elements to your scene, one thing you'll notice is all of them will actually have an element component attached. This can work for text, image, and all types of group elements as well. This is so that way you're able to identify that this is an actual entity for the 2D screen. This component in itself is what will allow you to align it to your screen. Essentially allow you to specify where you want this to be on the screen at all times. In the case of this text field, you can actually see that this is just anchored to the top and the way you can tell is by these little things here on each of the different sides. So what this is actually telling you is that this is going to scale horizontally and will always snap to the very top of the scene. You can also make it so that way it's always in the center and that it has a specific height as well. In the context of the specific text you can tell that over here we have all the different anchor points in case you don't want to move those elements around. And you can also change the pivot as well. You can also tell it to auto size accordingly. In this case, I want to hard code it to be exactly 100. However, if I wanted it to be a bit smaller, I can change it right here. The margin is what actually specifies how off from its initial point you want it to be. So if I were to change this element, you can see that on the very left hand side it has actually moved. Now these here are constantly changing as you adjust uh, your elements inside the scene. So you want to keep an eye on these and if you don't need them at all, just set them all to zero. And sometimes they will change themselves and it's just a matter of setting these to zero. And if you are finding some really weird behavior then make sure you refresh your browser. For the specific text component, we are able to actually align it in various parts of the scene. In this case, we can actually go and change it so that it's on the left hand side or on the right hand side using the horizontal alignment here. If I have it at 0.5, it is actually going to be at the very center. Changing this one here will do it vertically. However, it's quite hard to tell there, but if we were to make this a lot larger, then we can see that it is actually adjusting itself according. To modify the text component at runtime, you can easily do this creating a script. And that's when you can easily see the amount of money that you have will start changing. Images are fairly straightforward as well. All you need is an element component, change the type to image, and then over here, you can pass in a texture, which is an uploaded image from your computer, 
or you can pass in a sprite. Now, to tell the difference, a texture, as you can see over here, I actually have one, two, and three. You can tell it's because it doesn't have this little flag above it. And you can easily just pass that one in. And just specify the size. However, I also want to use a sprite. So in order to create a sprite, what we can do is we can right click on our texture, use it to create a sprite atlas, and then from that, and you can tell because it has this little flag, right click on that and go create sprite asset. And it will create this sprite here, as you can tell by the little Space Invaders icon. And then you can just drop that in. And it works the same way. Buttons are a step up from creating an image. So once you have created your button entity and you've selected this to image, given it its sprite, then you'll also want to check this, use input. If you do not have this enabled, then the button will not be clickable by the user. It'll act like it's just a standard image. Next up is the button component. Now this one here will come whenever you create a button entity is by default. Otherwise you can go and create one using a component. Down here we can actually see that we can turn our button on and off so that way it can and cannot be used which can also be triggered by script. And then we want to go and specify which image entity we want the button to interact with. In this case I'm using the button entity as you can see highlighted on the left hand side. Next up is the transition mode. Now this here is actually what happens whenever the user interacts with the button. In this case we're using tint so it will change the color of the button whenever the user hovers over the tint, presses it, or turns it on and off. Scroll views are one of the necessities of when it comes to creating UI as well. Having something where you can just scroll backwards and forwards in order to give the user more options without filling up the screen too much. To create a scroll view, you're able to create one using the user interface and scroll view element. This will go and create all the necessary options that you actually need in order to get a successful scroll view. When creating a scroll view, it will always go and create a scroll view component for you, of which you're also go and able to create through a component. For our scroll view, we're able to go and change how it actually works. So in this case, when we use clamp, we want it to be very snappy and very hard. We don't want it to go off the screen. If we change it to bounce, we are then able to go and see that it's able to stretch a lot more as you're using it. infinite we'll notice that it will just keep on scrolling regardless this one here is very good for if you want to have an infinite scrolling and have it wrap around however in my case it does not work because I have not added that functionality over here we can see that we actually have friction now this one here specifies how much the scroll view will move after clicking and dragging you can see that it slowly moves as I release the mouse. However, if we go and change this to 1, we can see that it just snaps. It does not slowly stop. The viewport itself is what you can see over here. So this here is the section of the screen of which the user can see. However, the content is actually what contains all the elements that you want to scroll. Over here we can specify the horizontal from left to right and the vertical from up down. In this case I'm only using left to right because I only want the user to scroll left and right in this example. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave a comment. Let me know what else you'd like to see.